Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gude, and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Infertility Centre in London. Today I'm going to talk to you about whether we can improve the chances of pregnancy in egg donation cycles and whether the use of injectable progesterone would make a difference. And I'm going to base this on one of the reviews done and published. So what are we looking at? We said, let's look at ovum donation cases for the time being, and then let us see whether we can use what we learned from this in uh, treating other patients. So now progesterone is given by two sources mainly, and in fact, some people do give it orally. Are it given either vaginally or systemically, either subcutaneous or intramuscular. The oral routes see, generally tend to be used less because of the first pass effect and its metabolization that occurs. And vaginal progesterone tends to give very high progesterone levels. So what we do, do know is that there are multiple studies which have come through and, and these I'll just enumerate. There were low pregnancy rates when there was low progesterone levels at the time of embryo transfer and high pregnancy rates. There were studies also which looked at low progesterone levels when a transfer was done. And a recent study which looked at vaginal progesterone gave a lower pregnancy rates in frozen cycles in autologous patients, which means those having their own eggs. And at present, there still continues to be a limited evidence and there is more and more talk that goes, or discussion that goes on whether we should give a trial with vaginal progesterone. So, and this is a case where donor cycles were done and women were less than 38 years old and all the donors, they had egg on his trigger and the recipient went on the long protocol to allow synchronization of donors. Six milligram estrogen and vaginal micronized progesterone 400 milligram twice a day was given. So from January 2016, so this study was done in a slightly different manner. So what they did is they, they did the intervention year wise. So in, the, in January 2016 to December 2016, every recipient got vaginal progesterone. Then from January 2017 to July 2017, they decided to change it and add injectable progesterone, 500 milligram, that's a large dose, once a week, even in 2 ml preparation, but if the HCG was positive. And the third was that from August 2017 to May 2019, and a weekly intramuscular injection of progesterone was given from the day of embryo transfer. So intervention in three places and progesterone levels were carried out. Now, if you have a look at the results and if you have a look at where there was no intramuscular progesterone given, you know, in fact, the progesterone levels were very much the same across the board. And that is something which is slightly different in this study. But if you look at a positive HCG, positive HCG was maintained as soon as you added injectable progesterone. But have a look at the miscarriage rates. And the miscarriage rates were lowest when the intramuscular progesterone was added at the time of embryo transfer. And in both the cases where either there was no vaginal uh, intramuscular progesterone and if they, they did not add the injectable progesterone at the time of transfer, rather it was added with the positive HCG, the miscarriage rates were the highest. And if you have a look at it again, the lowest tends to be the vaginal progesterone. The highest tends to be when the injectable progesterone was added on the day of embryo transfer. And somewhere in the middle tends to be when the injectable progesterone was added with a positive pregnancy test. This seems to go hand, hand in hand uh, with Brady's study, which basically said that you needed a certain amount of systemic progesterone to keep the pregnancy rates normal. Now, in fact, there's been only one study which has reviewed the effectiveness of vaginal progesterone and iron progesterone. And it's in fact, it's, it's still getting difficult to come to a complete conclusion of what's going on. Now, surprisingly, what we know is that miscarriage rates in egg donation cycle, and egg donation recipients seem to be higher. And if you look at this study, it was 48.6% in the egg donation cycles, while 
in artificially prepared donors who had uh, using their own eggs, it was 26%. And in fact, when you look at the, the French database and the USA donation patients had a 26.5% uh, miscarriage rate, while when women were treated with their own eggs, it was 11%. So something probably makes it increases the rate of miscarriage. Now, the, the causes could be multiple. And the question is why to do as in this study, women who will go through egg donation may be exposed to a higher risk of miscarriage. And one is, and I have always believed that, that women who are in premature menopause, women who are in, uh, who have had prolonged high FSH with low E2 levels tend to have smaller uteruses. And I'll always ask you, you know, measure your uterine length and you measure your uterine size and measure the endometrial thickness because all these makes apart. Smaller uteruses do not achieve an on, a good ongoing pregnancy and that data is quite good and quite a large amount of data has come through. So there also must be some amount of physiological intolerance to estrogen and progesterone goes up. What we know is that systemic progesterone and let's say intramuscular progesterone in this case leads to lesser contractions of the uterus. Now there's an implantation window and the implantation window it's not a fixed one day implantation window the implantation window extends for about four to four and a half days and it seems to occur between day six and day ten after that surge and there's a slight variation. Now hatching blastocysts should implant at this stage and ovulatory factors seem to be also responsible uh, for during the implantation window. Now, why does this paper say that you need to give injectable progesterone? And that's for a reason. And the, the reason probably is that you we probably restore the hormonal balance uh, in, in these hormonally deficient women. And in, in this study, women who had egg donation and who had intramuscular progesterone at the time of donation had similar miscarriage rates to women who had their own eggs. So in fact, it got parity in, in, in those uh, regions. Also, it's important to realize is that vaginal progesterone may uh, be absorbed quite abnormally in different cases. And if you had a look at the study, which was funded by Ferring in 1992, in fact, they showed, uh, they took biopsies of the endometrium to look at the tissue progesterone levels and compare it to the blood progesterone levels. And that shows a disparity that tends to occur. Also remember in this case, vaginal progesterone, uh, injectable progesterone was used, which was 500. And that's quite a large dose. And it's a depot preparation given every week. So on this basis of this study, and again, that's my also my personal opinion, which I, I would agree with them, is that some amount of systemic progesterone is needed and mainly in those cases of egg donation and probably starting from a time of embryo transfer. And we think that may give a rise to a better pregnancy rate. So th that's the bottom. And again, as many of these lectures go, I think it is an aim to improve the quality of care across all those who watch them. And at present, I believe people from at least 60 countries watch these videos, which I'm thankful to them. And it, it what I'm tr trying to do is as I learn new things, I, I try to convey it so that we improve the quality of care across. And each one of us picks up a small point and, and gives us a better success rate to our patients. Uh, I hope you do like uh, this page and do share this talk and uh, do rate and like the page. Thank you very much.